And so they ask him that very question. And again, he repeats, I'm the champion, Charles Oliveira. You were the champion, but you couldn't lose a half a pound an hour. And now you're not the freaking champion. Let that sink in. Everyone spells it different. Or no, they don't. Oliveira. Oliveira. Coach Greg and Charles Oliveira has been stripped of his UFC title after missing making weight. That's right. He missed his weight class by one half a pound. I'm going to be responding to the excuses that Charles Oliveira comes up with thinking that we're just going to believe him. Yeah, that's right. He made a bunch of excuses on why he missed weight, blaming it on the UFC on the scale. And I'm going to prove to you that you can't blame the scale. And so obviously he can't speak English. So I'm going to be responding to what the translator says that he said. All right. So he's given us his life story and the translator is going to explain what he just said. The champion has a name. His name is Charles Oliveira. And so the champion had a name. Not has a name, had a name. The UFC title for lightweight, it's vacant now. You can argue all you like and think, oh, it's their fault. I'm still the champion. You are not. You were the champion, a great champion, yes. But that's a former champion at this point. The story is I went up to my room and th I made weight in the UFC scale. And so what Thursday. happened? Well, he checked his weight officially on the scale to make sure he was in the weight class the night before. And he was at his weight, 155 pounds, no problem. Then went to bed, said he didn't drink or eat anything. He says so. And the next day he goes up on the scale and lo and behold, he's gained weight. Now it's either that he's lying, we don't know, perhaps he drank or ate something after weighing himself in the night before. Or perhaps he's sleepwalking, consumed a little bit of water in the middle of the night. And trust me, I've been dehydrated to this extent and more, and trust me, it is a nightmare. It is the hardest thing you will ever go through in your lifetime. We're not talking about dropping five, six, seven, eight pounds. We're talking about dropping 10% of your body weight, perhaps 20 plus pounds in a single day. Not saying this is safe, not saying it's healthy or anyone should do this, but I've done this for decades, coached powerlifters, bodybuilders, MMA fighters, and boxers to do this exact thing. And so the first mistake is you do not go to bed into your weight class. No one should ever do this. Why? Because you probably don't know that even when you're not peeing, your body continues to lose water weight. For example, the vapor coming out of your mouth in the evening when you go to bed, typically you're going to lose approximately 50 grams per hour. And so if he weighed himself the night before, nine hours later, he should expect to lose approximately one pound of body weight. And so if you're coaching a UFC fighter and they've already made their weight and they're suffering and they still have 12 hours to weigh in, you did your job incorrectly. Why? No, it's good. You want to make your weight early, right? Why? to prolong the suffering? Do you think that being severely dehydrated does not have a toll on the human body? That maintaining 155 pounds for 12 extra hours somehow gonna benefit you? You do not wanna be at your lightest weight for any longer than you absolutely need to. And so no one should actually be making their weight the night before the event. You can get close, perhaps two pounds over, but it is foolish to make the weight class the night before. And so that is the first mistake. Oh, and subscribe and click the bell button while you're at it if you want to hear more educational content. And so he should have weighed in about two pounds over his weight class the night before, gone to bed, continued to breathe a little bit, in the body it still sweats some, and in the morning probably would have been one pound over the weight. And what do you do at this point? You then sweat. How do you sweat? You wear several layers of clothing, jogging pants, sweaters, and so on, and a snowsuit. You keep yourself bundled up, a toque, a hat, gloves, whatever it takes to get your body very, very warm. And you do light cardio in a warm environment. In doing so, it's easy on the body. You're not running, you're not sprinting, you're not going for a workout. You're literally doing a slow bike ride or walking, say, one and a half miles an hour. Just enough to create some heat, some work on the body, and then the body tries to cool itself off. How does it do that? Through sweat. You then get a light sweat, 30 minutes, easily 
easily going to lose one pound or more in 30 minutes doing very light cardio. That way you suffer to the lowest degree. If you cut weight drastically way early on, you are going to have to suffer even longer. And the longer you stay severely dehydrated, the harder it is for the body to rehydrate after that. And so if you're a trained UFC fighter or any athlete whatsoever, you want to minimize the damage of the dehydration process. And so regardless of that, he then goes to the weigh-in, the official weigh-in, steps on the scale, and lo and behold, he is one half a pound over. Other athletes apparently have also complained, saying the scale seems to be about one half a pound over, approximately 225 grams. And you're thinking, wow, that's crazy. How could it be off by so much? These athletes know that when you step on a scale, there could be a slight variations. You don't think all the competitions have done throughout the years. I brought my own scale, traveled with a doctor scale, and you step on their scale, sometimes it's different. You have to expect these things, and so you plan for them. And the UFC, as well as other sporting governing bodies, they know this. They realize the athletes can sometimes be a little bit over. And so what do they do? They give you an hour to reweigh yourself. So he literally weighed in one half of a pound over the weight limit and had an hour to lose that weight. Do you know how easy it is to lose one half of a pound, 225 grams in an hour? And so if you're coaching Oliveira, you go to plan B. You have it prepared. You put on those sweat clothes, those layers of jogging pants, the snowsuit and so on, and you start doing light cardio, perhaps for 30 minutes, and you will for certain lose half a pound. Oh, but you're thinking, oh, but he was so dehydrated, he couldn't sweat anymore. He was at his limit. He had no urine production, couldn't pee anything, not even one ounce, and his ability to sweat, it was shut off. If you're dehydrating so much that your body ceases to sweat and can no longer produce urine, you've got a lot more problems to worry about than a fight the next day. You are fighting for your life. You're in a heat stroke, about to go in a coma, and very likely going to die. Oliveira did not look dehydrated to this extent. He stood on the scale, put his arms up, held it there for 15 seconds without losing balance, looked fine. I have literally gone to weigh-ins, stumbling over, can barely stand up, don't know who I am, can barely take my shirt off, can hardly walk, can't think. And so the fact he can't lose a half a pound in an hour tells me the coaches didn't tell him what to do. And so what exactly did he do to try to lose that half a pound in the hour following the weigh-in? The champion has a name, his name is Charles Oliveira. I came here to show you my story of superation and I will be able to one The champion has a name, his name is Charles Oliveira. I basically, I did everything I could. And so they ask him that very question and again he repeats, I'm the champion, Charles Oliveira. You were the champion, but you couldn't lose a half a pound in an hour and now you're not the freaking champion! Let that sink in. I mean, as soon as I found out and that, that happened, I went up there. I did the steam room, um, worked out, trying to get that. The, the, the champion cannot afford to do something like this. You, you need to work on it. And so he says, I did everything I could do. I went and worked out and I stood in the steam room. That is not how you lose a half a pound in an hour. Steam room, you think, is the best way to lose water. It is not. Did he, in fact, have five layers of clothes and a snowsuit and went into the steam room and started doing jumping jacks? No. You can't just sit there in the steam room and think you're going to drop a ton of weight. Also, people think the best way is you just lay in a hot bathtub, jacuzzi, and that makes you sweat the most amount of weight. No. And so if I had it been there, he would have made the weight class. I plan to fail. You have the sweat clothes available in case you miss weight. Think of it. This is the UFC, millions of dollars on the line. You don't have a plan of what happens if you miss weight. I'm just gonna blame the scale. Other athletes says it was off by half a pound. You said you weighed in and you made the weight the night before, didn't consume anything. And so you're going to try to convince me that the night before you weighed 155 pounds, consumed nothing, and went to bed, woke up, walked around, went to the weigh-in, then did a sauna and worked out and you're still 155.5 pounds. How is that possible? 
It is not. It's equivalent to saying I stopped eating and my body stopped burning calories. I couldn't lose any more weight. I went for a 10 hour walk. I came back and weighed the same. My body stopped burning calories. It is impossible. And so there's a hole in his story. And trust me, what you don't know is the level of suffering involved in making that weight. If you know you weighed in at 155 pounds the night before, you're very tempted to eat, to drink a little bit of water. You know you're going to lose 50 grams per hour. And so if I were coaching an athlete and they weighed in at 155 pounds the night before the weigh-in, I would tell them, I want you to eat about 450 grams worth of carbs. Why? Well, do you know how good those 450 grams are going to make you feel? How it's going to give you a head start on your glycogen load that's going to happen after you weigh in? If you're actually able to consume 450 grams of carbs extra the night before, once you reintroduce water, start drinking, trying to rehydrate, it's going to happen that much more quickly. And so oftentimes, if athletes do not have to suffer that much to make weight, I will get them to cut weight to about the weight class that they're making and have them eat food the night before. This offers them a significant advantage in the rehydration process. Trust me, if you can eat carbs the day before, weigh in and have carbs in your system, once you start drinking water again, it's so much easier to rehydrate. In comparison, if you're completely depleted, have no food in your system whatsoever, no carbs, no glycogen, it takes a lot longer to rehydrate, to feel better. And don't you think the athlete that can feel better the quickest is going to have an advantage when it comes to the fight? Of course it does. Oh, but powerlifters and bodybuilders, they don't know anything about cutting weight. Just because it's not as cool or as popular and we don't have millions of dollars when we fight or break world records in powerlifting doesn't mean we don't know what we're doing. A champion continues to work and goes until the end. And I try to do everything because I'm a professional and I'm a champion. And so imagine this. Oh, Charles Oliveira, you missed weight by half pound. What happened? Well, I went to bed and I was a little hungry and so I had some candies and drank a liter of water. Really? Do you think if he ate anything after he weighed in the night before, that he would actually admit it that he could? Imagine the people that would judge him. Really? So you're the champion and you couldn't handle being 155 pounds anymore. You were too hungry and so you decide to eat. People would make fun of him for years. And so what would he have to do? He would have to lie. And so he keeps repeating himself. I'm the champion. The champion's name is Charles Oliveira. I don't know why I did all this cardio. I stopped eating. I went to bed. I couldn't lose any weight. I don't know. I'm just breaking the laws of physics. That's just what I do. But I'm the champion. And because so many people are so gullible, they believe anything you see here. And because people are so gullible, they don't understand. They don't understand science. They're going to believe him. Oh, it had to be the scale. It had to be. He couldn't lose any more weight. It's not his fault. Even if all of that was true, that the scales, they planned it, they tried to screw him over, they gave him the wrong scale, they made him heavier. Even if all that was true, he should have been able to lose a half a pound in under an hour. And you're saying, yeah, but he was that close to his deathbed. He was that close to dying that he couldn't drop a single gram in an hour. If that was actually true, the UFC needs to do something to prevent the eventual death of someone trying to make weight. Because if you're making weight and you're at the point where you cannot lose a single gram in an hour, then you are ready to die. Not going to sugarcoat this. This far more dangerous than abusing PDs. Way, way more dangerous. No one should have to dehydrate to the point where they cannot sweat, where they cannot urinate, where they cannot drop a single gram in an hour. And so if they have to cut weight to that extent where they're talking about one or two grams that they have to lose and they can't lose it to make the weight class, then they didn't do their homework in the off season. Their walk around weight is too heavy. They're having to drastically cut too much weight. And so if that happens as a coach, you have to ensure that your athlete does not gain too much weight in the off season. For example, Patty Paddington, he's gaining 47 pounds in under two weeks after a UFC event. You can't expect to continuously drop 47 pounds every single time. Eventually you're going to miss it. You should not be gaining that much weight in the off season. If you are, you are setting yourself up for failure.
Yeah, we get it. He likes to eat. And listen, UFC fighters are normal people. And just because they're multi-million dollar athletes does not mean they don't suffer from the same body dysmorphia, body image issues that regular people do. Not everyone can maintain a body fat percentage that's low enough to cut this kind of weight. But you cannot leave it to the last minute. You can't go into camp and say, I'll just worry about that weight loss in the end. I'm going to keep eating the way I'm doing now. And come peak week, I'll just drop the 20 plus pounds I need. I can do it. I did it last time. Eventually, no, no, you won't be able to do it. And so overall, should they just give him the title? Say, it's okay, you're over by a half a pound? Of course not. If they do that, all the athletes are going to show up and say, hey, I'm within a half a pound, I'm good. Does the UFC need to make any changes? Absolutely not. Even if the scale is off by half a pound, they still have an entire hour to make the weight. If you can't lose a half a pound in an hour, hire a coach who can make that happen. I'm Coach Greg. I could do it for you. I am willing to help you out. And if you can't lose a half a pound in an hour, if you're worried that you can't, have a game plan. Plan in case you don't make weight. In case you're over by a couple hundred grams, have a backup plan. What are you going to do? What are you going to wear? Where are you going to go to? What room are you going to start sweating in? It all needs to be planned. Every detail needs to be planned. When I coached, I made sure that we knew what to do. And so you might think, I'm just a bodybuilder. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm also a bodybuilder with world records in powerlifting and have made weight more times than every single UFC fighter. Not doing this to brag, just trying to give you the details. I've done this for decades since I was a teenager, 46 years of age, coached world champions, also making weight. Make the weight class, you rehydrate, you do your thing. I don't know a thing about how to win a freaking USC fight. I'm not a fighting champion. I don't know how to box. I don't know how to wrestle. I don't know how to do the holds, but I know how to get them into the weight class. That is what they need. Ending it here. GregDuset.com for coaching. Greg Duset IP Pro. Please check out the bloops. Also, harder than last time supplements, including Turkestrone. The friggin' UFC fighters should be using that. Also, soon to come out, GO2 Max. Wait till you see what that can do for your endurance. Also, if you're not supplementing with beta alanine, I don't know what's wrong with you. Subscribe, get the friggin' cookbook, the training book, the coaching plans by me and my team, the circle diet book, all that. Click the link in the description. And until next time, I'm out.